Hey, good morning, Canvas Church, and happy new year to you. We made it. <laughs> it's, uh, it's been an amazing past year, and I'm so excited about the year uh, that is to come. We pray that your Christmas was amazing and that you had the opportunity to spend a lot of time with your friends and your family and that you were able to reflect on truly the, re the real reason uh, for the season, which is Jesus Christ, the promise that was perfectly kept. Uh, as you well know, if you've been around Canvas Church any length of time for the last five years, we uh, take the Sunday right after Christmas and and we just do online service. We just call it Sabbath Sunday, where we give all of our volunteers and all of our staff and all of the people that work so hard throughout the calendar year a much needed day to take a break. And we hit the reset button to get ready for the upcoming year. But we also take this day to do something that I love very, very, very much. We take a moment to reflect and we take a moment to rejoice. When you read the Psalms, you're going to find that King David wrote a lot of intriguing and fascinating and amazing Psalms. I love the Psalms for a plethora of different reasons. But one of my most favorite Psalms in all of the collection is Psalm 103. And here's what King David said. He said, bless the Lord, O my soul. From head to toe, I'll bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and do not forget a single blessing. Do not forget a single blessing. Let me tell you what David knew. David had discovered what you and I have discovered. He knew that life can sometimes find a relentless pace where not intentionally, but we just get caught up in the race of life, the busyness of life, the hectic nature of life. And we can sometimes forget all that God has done and all that God is doing in our life. It's so easy to just kind of skim over and we're just living from the next project, the next event, the next calendar date to the next without really taking a moment and stopping and really truly counting our blessings. To really take a moment and specifically say, what is it that God has done and what is it that God is doing and what do we believe that God is going to do in the future again it's not intentional it happens to me it happens to you but uh, we love to take this day and to stop for just a brief moment and to reflect on all that God has done uh, so we want to bless the Lord today okay what we want to do is we just want to say thank you Lord and we want to say God what is it as we stop for a moment and reflect, what is it that you have done through and in the ministry of Canvas Church? And I want you to know that everything that I'm about to tell you is because of you. Yes, of course. God has a will for his church. Yes, the blessing of the Lord is over the church. Yes, the Holy Spirit has moved through the church. Yes, Jesus died for the church. Of course, we know all of that. But if there were not people that believe that, that embraced that, that accepted Jesus into their life and have become followers of the Lord Jesus Christ through obedience and leadership, through their giving, their generosity, their service, the mission of Jesus would never be able to continue. And so God has allowed us to partner with him in this massive endeavor to the world called the Church of Jesus Christ. And so I want you to know that the ministry of this church is because of you. All that God has been able to do, all that God is still doing through Canvas Church is because of you. In fact, there is a scripture in the book of 1 Thessalonians that um, reflects how I feel today. Let me give you just a little bit of background before I read it, okay? Paul was a missionary, as you well know, and an apostle who traveled through the ancient world preaching Jesus, winning souls, planting and overseeing churches. And one of the cities that Paul desperately had his sights on was a city called Thessalonica, and the reason was is because it was a chief port city in the northern part of Greece. It was one of those places that people launched from and came in from all over the world. It was a major hub of transportation that literally the entire world was using. And uh, it was the epicenter of trade and commerce. And so Paul knew that if somehow he could make a major impact in this port city for Christ, that it would be a major key, that it would be a major linchpin in spreading the gospel to the rest of the world. The, the, the problem, if you study history, is that Paul encountered major opposition there, and he was really only 
able to preach about three times. That was not his intention. His intention was to make a, uh, 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 to make a, uh, a standard there. His intention was to make it a hub for his ministry for many years to come. But because of the incredible opposition, he was really only able to speak about three times. And then he had to be smuggled out of the city by some of the believers there because his life was in danger. And because of that, Paul later reflected, did we even make a dent? I mean, did we even make a difference? Did we even make any impact at all? At all? But Paul gets word back that the churches that are in Thessalonica have indeed not only been inspired by his visit, and they're not only surviving, but they are thriving. They are strong, and they are preaching Jesus. And even though Paul himself is not there, they are using Thessalonica as the hub, and indeed the gospel is going around the world. And so they had committed their lives to making much of Christ. And so Paul sits down, and when he hears this incredible news, he writes a couple of letters back to Thessalonica. That's where we get in the Bible, First and Second Thessalonians. And he writes these letters. And I want to read just one little excerpt that really stands out to me in reflection of what we're doing here today. First Thessalonians chapter 3, verse 8 and 9. Paul says, It gives us new life to know that you are standing strong in the Lord. Oh, how we thank God for you because of you, because of you, we have great joy in the presence of our God. Paul's heart was full of joy because of the impact that the people were making in their community for Jesus Christ. And when I read that every year around this time of the year, my heart is overwhelmed like Paul's because what I want to say to you as your pastor today is that because of you, I also have great joy. Because of you, I am filled with the joy of the Lord. My heart is full as I reflect on the incredible difference that Canvas has made this year. My heart is full because of the impact that Canvas has had on so many lives this year. See, what I'm trying to tell you is because of your faithful giving and your generosity, because of your serving, because of your praying, because of your leadership, because of your selflessness, because of your willingness, because of your love for God and for people, because of you, God is making a major impact all over our region and the world. In fact, let me just give you a few. These are not exhaustive, but just some things that I think are noteworthy. Because of you, over 60 zip codes in 32 cities attend Canvas Church every week. Because of you, 509 new families came to Canvas in 2022. Because of you, our largest in-person gathering in 22 was 2,796 people in one weekend gathering here at Canvas Church. Because of you, together we gave over $2 million to continue the work of the gospel both here and abroad. Because of you, we were able to launch 18 new small groups and 212 new people joined those groups. Because of you, we had 165 new people join a volunteer serving team and together we gave over $2 million to continue the work of the gospel again in North Florida and here around the world. 95 people went public with their faith through baptism because of you. And as of today's recording, because of you, because of your giving, your faithfulness, and your generosity, 961 people have given their lives to the Lord Jesus Christ right here at Canvas Church. Look, look, I don't even have time to mention the benevolent difference our giving made around the country and the world through organizations like One Hope, Compassion International, Haiti, and Hurricane Relief, and many, many, many more. What I want you to know is that God is doing something Big and beautiful and amazing and unusual in and through our church. And it's because of you. And because of us collectively coming together and say, you know what? I'm not just going to sit every week and receive and listen to the gospel and amen it, but leave unchanged, unchallenged, and uncommitted 
But I really believe that the gospel that has gotten to me and my family is so rich and full, and it has so transformed our lives that we want to continue the legacy of Jesus and other people, people that we don't even know yet, people that we don't know if we'll even ever meet yet, but somebody gave and somebody served because they wanted me to know Jesus, even when they didn't know me personally. How can I take that gift and just eat that seed? Oh, no, I'm going to pay it forward, and I'm going to help other people know the gospel and know the peace and the love and the hope that only Jesus can give. And I want to say, I thank God for you so much. We are here on purpose, with a purpose, and for a purpose. There's a scripture that I love very much that really kind of brings it home for me when I think about this time and this age that we all live in. It's in Acts chapter 17, verse 26. <laughs> Here's what it says. From one man, he made all the nations that they should inhabit the whole earth. He's talking about God. And then he said, and he marked out their appointed times in history. I, I want you to feel the weight of that. And he marked out their appointed times in history. That means that God knew the beginning from the end and the end from the beginning because he is sovereign. And he specifically chose each and every human being to live at a very specific point and time in history because they were uniquely crafted by God to meet a need that was needed in the world at that particular time. That means that you are not here by random. That means that I am not born in this time and on this earth randomly. It means that God knew us in our mother's womb. Bible says we're fearfully and wonderfully made and he specifically chose that you and I would be on this planet at this specific time to perform the task and to continue the ministry that he has so desired and longed for for the world. Unbelievable. And I am so thankful that we have come together and found each other and that God has brought us together for a season and a time like this. God has sent us here together right now, right now, to do his will and to help others know his love and forgiveness. We have been strategically placed here at this particular time to make an impact for Christ. And not only have we, but you know how I feel about it. Not only have we, it, what God has done is amazing, but I promise you, Canvas, the best is yet to come. I promise you, the best is yet to come. I am so honored to be your pastor. Thank you, thank you, thank you for believing in the vision with us. Thank you for praying for me as your pastor, for all of the support and encouragement that you give to the staff and I continuously. Our heart is to always lead you well. Our heart is to always feed you well. Our heart is to always follow the leadership of the Holy Spirit as best as we know how in order to help people far from God come to know his love and ultimately bring as much glory to God as we possibly can. Now, I want to point you to next week because next week is a very important message that is going to set the tone, I believe this, for the entire year. I'm going to be preaching and talking about the principle of first fruits in our life and in the scripture and how they teach us this incredible, powerful principle that sets the tone for every dimension of our life to receive the blessing of the Lord uh, into and through our lives. It's going to be an incredible day. I am so excited to get this new year started. I want you to invite some to come and be with you. Trust me, they're going to be so glad that you did. And as we close out 2022 and we launch into this new year full of possibilities in 2023, I'd like to just take a moment if I can and pray over our church and pray over you and your family and pray over all that God has for you in this upcoming year. Can I do that? Father, I just, uh, I, I'm just in awe. I really am. And I'm just so thankful and filled with gratitude in my heart for all that you are doing and all that you have done. And yet we know that all that you have done is not all that you want to do. And as we stand on the precipice of a new year, I just feel pregnant with purpose and possibility. I just, I'm so filled with excitement of what I believe that you're going to be doing in and through Canvas Church. I believe this is going to be our very best year yet. 
in ministry, in souls, in lives that are changed, in marriages that are transformed. I just believe our impact this year is going to be greater than ever before. And Father, every person that calls Canvas home, I speak your blessing over their life. May your face shine upon them. May the glory of the Lord go round about them. May you go before them in every part of their life and make a way where there seems to be no way. May you fill them with purpose and the plans of God and the anointing of your spirit and the leadership of your wisdom. I just thank you, God, for what you're about to do and what you're going to do. And may everything that is said and done not only be for our good, as Romans 8 and 28 says, but may it be for your glory and for your honor and for your praise. We love you, Father, and we dedicate all of our life and all of our ministry and all of the work of our hands and our heart to you again. May God receive all of the glory, the honor, and the praise. It's in Jesus' name we ask it. Amen and amen. I love you, Canvas. Can't wait to see you right here next week for our first fruits message. God bless.